Yes, in the back again. Charles Darwin said in his book, Origin of Species, that two things need to happen, otherwise evolution is just a theory. He said that there needs to be the transition fossils, and he said that there needs to be simple building blocks and in all living things. And clearly, as science has evolved, we see that cells are not simple. So my question is why, why should we base the validity of all of our life's beliefs on a theory? Well, that's a pretty big question, and it's a good question. I would start with actually contesting what you said that Darwin said. That's number one. I don't think he said it in those words, but let's not quibble over that. Let's go directly to the last word you used, because people use it all the time. Evolution is just a theory, right? That's basically, that's the crux of it. Okay, you ever heard of gravitational theory? Works pretty well. How about the germ theory of disease? You see, in science, we use the term theory in a different way. It's not somebody's wild idea. You could even argue that it was Darwin's, but it's been tested scientifically. It's been demonstrated to have happened. Evolution is a fact, it's not a theory. There is evolutionary theory, and that is the body of fact and observation that we can impose, we can bring to bear on the question of how things evolve. Let's take your building block example for that, right? I'm not sure that Darwin said that, but I am damn sure that Darwin didn't know what DNA was. And I'm certain that he didn't know what a nucleotide is. Uh, Sarah has informed us all about nucleotides. Those, I think, are the building blocks. Right? We, we, we're getting this fantastic understanding, and let's bring this back to medicine now. Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Many of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigators around this country at the top universities, and believe me, they pick the very best people in the world to do this research. These people are working on those building blocks because those building blocks sit at the fundamental foundation of things like cancer. Now. If you're given a choice between an evidence and reason-based interpretation of your cancer, of those cells out of control, and, well, we'll let's think about it and psychically go after it, what are you going to take? I, you know, I'm, I'm going with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigator every single time. Right? That's pretty much demonstrated to be the way to go. And so it is with evolutionary biology. That is a part, medicine is a part of this grander overarching evolutionary biology. It just means that we scientists have looked at this from every angle. And as you can see from listening to us during these lectures, we're pretty critical people. That critical element of science is always there because you can always level it against the colleague and say, whoa, you blew it there. Darwin blew it there and Darwin did blow it in a number of cases. He didn't know anything about heredity. He thought it was blending. We now know it's particulate. It's the particles. Those are the building blocks. But look how beautifully that merges into his understanding of natural selection. Look at the predictions that are made. Look at the prediction we made about a single valley in Africa where we start with Abdullah on top and we step back through time through a series of forms with smaller brain cases and bigger faces all the way back to a creature that is not a chimp and not a human. That's, it's, you, you, know, you, could, you could say that we tested the hypothesis there. And by so doing, we've demonstrated that evolutionary theory applies well, in this case, much as it does in the biomedical basis of cancer. Another question in the back again.